So basically what I want to do is just give you a short bit of background. Um, Learning Explore has basically been a, a product that we've been working on for the last couple of years. And it's come about from um, our experience with our previous product called Lesson Planet, which is just on LessonPlanet.com. That product we sell directly to teachers. And teachers basically subscribe to that service and they put their credit cards in. Uh, and basically pay their own money. So what we've learned through that process was that if you're going to be successful in that market, you really need to have a tool that teachers feel like this makes sense, it's easy to use, it's intuitive, and it saves them time. So we've taken that experience, and all three of us actually have a background in education and actually software development, which is kind of a cool combo. And so we've kind of taken that expertise that we learned about working directly with teachers as teachers ourselves and having customers as teachers and work directly with a school district partner to come up with a solution for curriculum that allows one to basically gather curriculum from all different sources. So whether or not you're using, um, let's say, a, a particular piece of um, curriculum by a, a provider such as HMH, um, and you want to add to that, you know, some great resources that you find in the web, say maybe from the NASA site or from Smithsonian, um, along with um, other OER that you might find or other things you subscribe to, say like Discovery Ed, and basically pull together all this curriculum from all these different places, make it super easy, super intuitive, collect it in a way that makes sense for for you to give to your students and an easy way for it to get to your students as also a way for you to share it with your colleagues and um, let them kind of use all that work that you did in putting together great curriculum. So whether you're an individual teacher or you're some, excuse me, some type of curriculum um, provider, you know, in, in, the, in a role in your district where you might have a little bit more um, control over what's what you're doing with your curriculum, then um, it kind of provides that ability for people to work together at all these different levels and provide a curriculum that's much more, um, I, I want to say it, it continues. It, it's just always on this path of being um, improved upon. So it kind of also takes away that problem of like, let's say that you've just decided to adopt new curriculum and it's almost like starting over. I knew as a teacher that was like one of the biggest things to me. It's like, whoa, we've got a new publisher and I'm starting over. This is like uh, this idea that you can continue to improve on your curriculum and never have to do that restart. While you might replace parts, you're not replacing at all. So what we really want to show you is what we call the Learning Explorer. It's a learning object repository that really allows kind of that ease of use and a way for um, teachers to collaborate and share curriculum with students. So Alex is going to start and then we'll kind of um, show you both well, how what the teacher can see and then also what an admin can see. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to switch screens and we're going to see the actual Learning Explorer now. Um, so what you're seeing here, this is the search page and this is kind of where all the action happens. Um, this is where you, the search bar is where you're going to search by keyword, phrase, um, and then kind of narrow down and filter your search to get the best of the best that you're looking for and um, find all of your learning objects right here. So a few things I want to point out first is this provider list box. So this is one of the customizable features of the Learning Explorer. Um, this specific list of providers is customized to my school district for demo purposes. And we have our, you can see the my school district content. So that's gonna be the, the content that my mm -hmm. district has found, um, that my district has curated and uploaded and created. Hold on, let me start over. So this, this content is gonna be the content that your, that my school district has created. and it lives in here amongst the lesson planet curated OER that we've been doing for the past eight, 18 years. Um, and then you're going to see other high quality OER like Engage New York, Georgia DOE. And then you have your, you know, your subscription based content. So Discovery Education, Novation, and then Newzella. So this is just a sample provider. 
list box. Um, you can narrow, you can continue narrow down your search by grade, subjects, um, resource types. So if you were to click primary sources, you would be able to see all primary source learning objects. And then down here below are the standards. So this is another customizable facet for a district. So if a district requests that they have their specific state standards in here, um, then these would live here. Um, and one last thing I want to point out is the customizable learning score logo. So this would be customizable to a specific school district's logo as well. Now going over here to the learning objects, if you, you can see all the different types. They're kind of visually laid out units, interactives, activities, assessments. So what happens if you hover over one of these resources, you're going to see a quick description of the resource, a rating given by our teacher team, and very brief details. Now if you click on it, you're going to get the more extensive details. So you're going to see the quick description, you're going to see the concept. So these, these links are going to tie this resource back into search with related um, resources. Instructional ideas, so how might you be able to use this in the classroom, considerations, so things that you need to know ahead of time to help you plan, and then pros and cons. Um, and then also over here we have the finer details, so you're going to see the subjects, the tier two subjects, um, the type, the audience, and down here we have our instructional strategies which range from project-based learning to um, hands-on activities, and then our usage permissions, so we make sure to <coughs> make the source known and their permission terms of use. And one thing I just want to point out right here before I move on is this flag resource, this flag symbol. So we found that being able, districts being able to control what is in search, whether it be something that's sensitive or whether it be a link that's maybe not working, that a teacher has the ability to flag this and let the content, the admin manager know that it's, it needs to be reviewed. Um, if I click on this resource, I can actually go to the resource. So view it and decide if I want to use it there. So that's pretty much it on the um, overview of the search page. Now Molly's going to take over from here and kind of take on the role of a teacher and building this personalized curriculum that is offered. Yes. Okay, so um, yeah, as a teacher, when you see all of these um, learning objects, you are obviously excited, but you need a way to organize them and um, need a way to kind of personally curate them into usable collections. And that's what this collection builder over here is for. So I'm going to walk you through how a teacher might use our collection builder to create a collection based on teaching primary source analysis to a junior high U.S. history class. Um, and also, <clears throat> excuse me, be able to actually assign that collection to their students. Um, so if I was a teacher who was starting to build a collection um, on primary sources, my first thing I might do is just use this um, search query up here for primary sources. And um, this is a pretty powerful query. Um, you're going to find that it's going to give <clears throat> a, a pretty large, excuse me, <clears throat> group of resources. Um, that can be narrowed down really quickly using these fa this faceting on the left. Um, but right now I'm seeing that there's almost 9,000 resources for primary sources. And I just want to point out how many different resource types you can see just on this first page. Worksheet, here's a lesson plan that's already in a collection. Um, here's another lesson, here's an activity, there's a professional document down here. So you can see that there's quite a few here. I imagine that you're going to want to narrow that down a little bit more. So I'll just go in to the resource types and narrow it to lesson plans um, because I'm going to imagine first I want a lesson plan on how to actually incorporate primary sources with my class. Um, so here now I have 3,000 lesson plans. I could narrow it even more, but I'm going to go with this and say I found this primary source lesson plan that I want to use in my classroom. So after I've looked at it, I'm going to create a collection in the Collection Builder. And it's, it's really easy. You can just open it up right here. Um, and then you can title it. And I can say, um, practice um, with analyzing primary sources. Um, you can write a description here. This could be just for personal use. Or it could be, we'll talk later about how you can actually publish the collection. So it could be for use of publishing so that other teachers can use your collection. 
but for me, I'm just going to assume it's, um, it's for my own information. Um, so I'll say, I plan to use this collection uh, with my eighth graders after they practice um, analyzing primary sources in class. Um, focus will be constitutional convention. <clears throat> okay, and then I can put my the grade in here, subject, United States history, and create my collection. Um, and once it's been created, I can just start dragging and dropping resources into it, which is really fun because you can put as many in as you want. You can always remove them later. Um, so I've got a lesson plan in there. Now I might want to go in and find a video for them to look at. Um, so if I wanted to do that, I could search up here, constitutional, there we go, um, convention. I can go in and look for, I can search by provider, only lesson plan it, curated resources. Um, I can go down here and select um, video. <clears throat> and here I'm going to find, um, it, so it narrows it down pretty quickly by, by doing just those three things. Um, here's a crash course history video, so I'll drag that in there. Um, and then I might want, obviously, to put some actual primary sources in there. So I'll clear out my faceting. Um, I'm going to do Constitutional Convention up here again. Um, and then down in Resource Types, I'll select Primary Sources. And then I'm just going to be able to see primary sources on the Constitutional Convention that I can choose from. Um, so I can just scroll down and see. Here's an interactive. That looks interesting. So I can drag that in. Um, here's some newspaper articles. I'll put that in there. Here's <clears throat> something on the New Jersey plan, so I'll put that in there as well. So now I'm up to five um, resources, and at this point I'm going to change gears into the Edit Collection um, tool. So I'm just going to click here. So this is our Edit Collection modal, and what you're looking at here are the items um, on the right, and then all the information, the details of the collection on the left. So you can see the description that I wrote earlier. Um, and at this point, this collection is, is um, something I could publish, so I'm not going to do it now, but I could hit publish. And what that would do is it would make this collection available for my colleagues in the district to use and to um, remix and share, but we'll go over that a little bit later. Um, so over here, um, you can see there's other options for adding items to my collection. So I'm just going to go through the different things that a teacher could do in creating a collection that they plan to share with students. Um, so first I'm going to start by um, adding a page, and this is really open-ended for the teacher um, to create content for their collection. I'm going to use it as kind of an instructions page for my students, so I'm just going to write instructions, read these first. And then what I'll do is I'll just give them quick um, instructions on how to use the collection. Hi there. Oops. Hi there. Please um, analyze these primary sources, sorry about the spelling, um, primary sources, <clears throat> and then fill out the form, and we'll do that too, at the end of the collection. Make sure to pay attention to details, and remember what we did in class, Some, whatever you want to put there. Um, you can also add an image. Um, I usually like to do that on an add a page because it's a little more eye-catching, so you can um, just put in, a, you can put in an image URL, or you can upload one that you already have, so I'll put one in, I'm just going to fix this spelling error too, primary, okay, um, so here's an image I put in, um, and then I'm just going to save that as, an, as a page, and this doesn't show up here right now, but if you refresh the page, it does, um, so there's add a page, and then I'll upload a file. And this is also something that teachers can use in a variety of ways. Um, the example that I'm doing is just using kind of for administrative purposes and maybe a lesson outline. Um, so I'll, I'll add that file in. It'll automate, automatically put in the title, and then I can put in any metadata that I, I want to for, that, um, for what I just put in. So that, in this case, I'll just fill in um, oops, lesson plan. And then com you can also align it to standards here. So I'll align it to a common core standard that is specific to, there we go, to primary sources. And then you can leave a description here as well. Um, so I'm going to put a quick description and just say, this lesson plan is for admin purposes. 
Um, and just, you're probably thinking now what uh, most teachers are thinking, which is that um, you probably don't want your students to be seeing some of these things, and we're going to go over that as well. Um, so done. And then um, you can add a link. Uh, so the other thing you can do is you can add a link to, I mean, any link is available here. I want to demonstrate how um, Google Forms can be integrated, though, into our collection player. So I have a form that I created um, that you could ask students to fill out. Um, this one, it's asking just some simple questions, and I can use the share link. <clears throat> Copy. And then I can go back in here and just put this in. And it'll automate the, the name. You can put notes if you want um, and add that to the collection. So then I have a form. And then you can drag and drop as you wish. So I'm going to just put some of these things um, in different places. I'll put my instructions in the front um, and then the video. And then the primary sources. Um, put this at the end. And then what I'll do is this lesson outline that I don't want students to see is um, I'm going to hide this from the player. So that's an option. You can just hide things that you don't want um, people to see who you're sharing the collection with. So hide this from the player as well. Um, you can also add notes here. So anything that needs a note, this would be for a teacher's own, um, own use, like private use. Um, so you can add a note on the back and uh, remind yourself of something. So again, these two will not show up in the player, but these first five will. Um, so the next step would be to actually view this in our collection player. So I'm just going to go here. And um, Alex was talking about how there's a customizable logo. And so you can see the Learning Explorer logo up here um, in the top left corner. But that would be customized if the, um, if the district had a customized logo that would display their logo. Um, so here's what a student would see or somebody you share the collection with. Um, you can open up this navigation bar at the bottom, and then up here you can see the resources. Um, so here's that instruction page that I wrote for them. Um, if they use these arrows, they can just navigate right through the resources. Here's the video. So if they, they can play it right in here. Okay, and then they can continue through. Um, these are all, you can interact with these just as you would on the web. So um, this one doesn't have a lot of scrolling, but you can see it scrolls a little bit. Um, the next one you'll be able to see a little more of how you can interact. So here's that newspaper primary source. Um, so they can go ahead and click there and view larger. Right, This is all within the player. They're not, they're not coming out of um, the actual player to do this. Um, here's that interactive uh, primary source resource. So they can click into these and play around with, um, with these resources. Go down, go to next. That's a really cool one. Um, and then lastly, they can go, once they've analyzed the resources, um, they can go in and um, fill out the form. So I can just do response. And then the teacher, if, if they're using Google Forms, they would get this. Um, they would get the list of responses and they can submit that. Um, yeah, so, so if you're happy with it and you feel like that's something you want to assign either to students or colleagues because sometimes teachers can use this as a way to share units or curriculum with their cohort or um, professionally, um, but if you're ready to assign it, you can just click Assign Collection and then give it a, um, we do have an access key system, so you just enter an access key that you would share with anyone you give the link to. Um, so I'm going to enter in Cody and save. And then we're integrated with Google Classroom. So if, this, if the school does use Google Classroom, then um, a teacher can just click here and it'll immediately um, help them to assign this in Google Classroom. But if they don't use that, then they can use this share link and they can put that anywhere they, they want to share the collection. So you just copy the share link and then I'll show you what somebody who got that link would actually see. So they would enter in the share link. And so here it is, practice with analyzing primary sources. They put in the access key that you give them and then submit it and, and then they'll end up seeing your collection. So um, yeah, so a great way to, to sort of consolidate resources into a way that is, is really functional for teachers. Um, the other part of it is that uh, as a teacher, if you've created these types of collections or you've saved resources, you want a way to see everything you've created. 
So um, the next thing I want to show you is our curriculum manager. Um, so right under the profile, you can see under my resources, um, we have this curriculum manager page, which is just personal to your account. So this is not shared with anybody. Um, and you see the collection builder is, is still on the side here, so you can use that within this page. And this shows a teacher everything that they have um, favorited on the site. This is curriculum that they've saved from the resource review pages. Um, you can open it up and look. And then anything you've uploaded, so there's that lesson outline that I uploaded. Um, and then all the collections you've created. So here's the collection I just created, and we can open it up. Um, the other thing you can do here is, is you can actually copy items out of a collection into another one using this collection builder. So you can see you can pick your collection. Um, maybe I want to put one of these resources from my light collection into this one that we were just doing. Um, and you can see it doesn't take it out of the light collection, but it does add it into um, this one. Um, so that's another way that you can use the collection builder. Um, and this is pretty customizable too. You can sort by different things. You can um, move things around like that. Um, everything's drag and drop in here too. Um, and I think, yeah, that's it. For, so that's kind of how a teacher would use it. Um, Alex is going to go through some of the uses for an administrator in the Learning Explorer. Yeah. Do you also want to show like oh, what it looks like to publish? Thank you. Yes, yes. I do. Um, yeah, so we talked about publishing a collection. So yeah, we wanted to show you what that actually looks like if somebody publishes a collection. So in the um, in search, you can see any collections that have been published. Um, so down here in resource type, you can types you can see collections. Um, so if I just select that, you'll see um, we have quite a few just showing up here. Um, here's one that is pretty large, 29 items. Um, so if you publish a collection, this is what it looks like on search. Um, other teachers can search for it and find it. Um, there is a description, which we wrote a short description for ours. Um, concepts, common core standards. Here's all the items that are in the collection that you can move through. Um, and then if you want to see the full items or reviews, you can just open up this bottom part and see um, them here. So some of them will have reviews, some of them are just um, links that were uploaded into the collection. Um, the other part I want to show you, <clears throat> excuse me, is if you wanted to actually save a collection that somebody else had created, that's, a, um, that's an option from here too. I'd already saved that other one, but um, this one, if I wanted to save it to my curriculum manager, I can just click here and you can see it's been added to my curriculum manager. And then I can actually remix this collection. We always attribute the original creator, um, but I can do lots of things with this collection <clears throat> if it's something that I want to, um, if I want to use it for my own classroom. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that like the, the common core there, oh, um, so that, that would change if on, that, on this particular um, site, it was say Florida, right? If, if we were supporting the Florida standards for, for this district account, then those would be Florida standards. Um, yes. And that's really the difference. As far as like who can publish things to the site, that's totally controllable by um, the back end. So if um, you only want specific teachers to be able to publish things um, so others can find them in search, you have full control over who gets to publish. Um, okay, so Alex is going to go over the administrator side. All right, so like Luann was saying, if certain um, certain people will have certain privileges, and one of those being an admin, you would find your admin privileges under your name. And when you get to your admin dashboard, this is kind of where you can an admin can control. Um, their teachers, their schools. You can see all of my schools right here. I can see the teachers within. I can edit these and, and um, see some reporting for different schools. I can also go over here to my content manager. And the content manager really allows the schools and districts to be able to control what their teachers are seeing in search. Um, so earlier I showed you the I showed the flag resource. So I flagged that resource and it is now here for my content manager to review. 
So if I was the content manager, I would kind of, you know, see why this was flagged, um, hide it, fix it. However, I wanted to control this learning object within the, within the explorer. Um, so one of the neat things about the content manager is the ability to upload that unique district content. So if my school district has created specific curriculum or um, pacing guides, then I could easily upload that here. And they would do that by add a resource, kind of like how Lesson Planet does on the back end, but we're giving the content manager to be able to do that within their own school district. Um, and then lastly, we have the reporting dashboard. So the reporting dashboard is just a way for the, the admins to be able to see how the, how the resources are being used, um, which providers are being used most, which are not being used as much, um, how many collections are being built, um, and then again, a breakdown of the kind of content subject areas um, in the learning score. So this is kind of our beginning stages of, a, of our reporting dashboard. So this is going to be built out, and Luann's going to kind of talk about that, as well as future roadmap. Yeah. So um, basically, this um, yeah. So this this reporting dashboard. Um, well, it's it's kind of cool. It, there's actually a, a number of other things that that we're working on in terms of giving um, one insight into how the resources are being used. Um, you can't. You can. You can see how some of the resources are being used at the district level and also at individual schools um, through different periods of time. Uh, and there's there's a lot more information that, that we're working on, um, kind of expanding this dashboard. Um, some of the other things that kind of didn't come up um, as we were doing the demo um, that maybe you can't see from from the that, that's going on in the background. Um, one of the things that that whenever you're dealing with web-based learning objects, uh, there's definitely that problem of what, what do you do when certain sites go down or resources become unavailable. Uh, we have a, a, a we, we're calling the, the web basically nightly. I think it actually takes us a longer than a single night to, to get through all of the resources. There's actually, so we're doing crawling, we're doing backups of, of the resource pools. We're also doing nightly updates with some of these special providers so that there's always kind of like the latest and greatest out there. Um, there's, um, we're also hosted on AWS, so we're very scalable when it comes to um, being able to, um, you know, if, if, if we need to have the site, um, you know, available, say, because in, in a heavy use kind of scenario, say for instance, say a Sunday night after a long weekend or first week of school or something, um, the, the great thing about being on, on a cloud-based, totally scalable AWS is, is it really gives us that, that scalability and security that's so important to schools. Um, we support single sign-on and auto-rostering. Uh, Alex kind of showed you kind of the the, the schools and stuff, but that can also be um, through an auto rostering um, situation. Um, and then some of the other, and it's it's totally customizable in terms of, I mean, we've white labeled it, we've included the product inside an iframe, so it looks like it's actually part of another product at times. Um, standards are definitely customizable, and so is everything in terms of that provider box where where you see like how all the different resource areas that that provider pool can be totally unique for every district. Um, it's we use responsive design, so this looks great on a tablet. You can use your phone to find resources. Um, one of the really nice things is the player really works well for on the phone. Um, I know myself, like when I was teaching, I loved to create videos and flip my classroom, and kids were definitely watching me on their phones. Mm -hmm. So being able for them to, to get their homework, get their assignments, and have them look good on the phone is, mm -hmm. is important. Um, and, and then as far as like where we're going with things, one of the things we're definitely working on is, is working with more providers. Um, for instance, um, when you take a... a a provider in, in terms of content, um, 
that it has, say, thin common cartridge. An example of that may be, say, like a HMH course or something, right? You, that's really this hierarchical content that is kind of really different than what we're showing here. These are more individual learning objects. So that ability to kind of like also show a hierarchy of, of, a, of a, say, a course, and then the units in the course, and the lessons in the units, and all of that, and all the teaching materials that might be around those different layers. Um, we're adding all of those features so that you can navigate not just through the hierarchy, but also get to individual learning objects. So let's say you just want lesson three, which might be on volcanoes or something from HMH. You want to include that with some great discovery ed videos on volcanoes, along with you know, uh, you know, the latest. Um, article that you just found on the web on volcanoes, you can kind of mix and match and put it all together and give that really rich curriculum to your students. Uh, so, so we're definitely doing a lot of work there in terms of different providers and, and the varied resources they could possibly have for us. Um, one of the things that's also had that we're working on and, and continuing to do to expand on is our metadata. So some of these really rich providers have um, have a lot of great resources which really address accessibility needs of students. So being able to target resources to students that really help, maybe it's a text-to-speech thing or there might be a translation available or something, and being able to allow teachers to hone in on those kind of resources that support that kind of thing. Um, Lexile is another area where if you wanted to find resources based on certain Lexile levels, you could also do that. So we're definitely trying to expand what we're doing in terms of kind of the, the whole breadth of resources, but also the depth and, and kind of really helping teachers and curriculum people really find those unique resources. So um, I think that's, that's kind of it. I feel like we've kind of covered it all. Um, we definitely are available for other questions if you have them, if you just want to email Molly things we didn't cover. Yeah. Um, you know, we'd be happy to do that, and I think we're going to send her a link. And yes, so I will send you, a, well, you'll get a link from the Learning Explorer actually saying you've been invited to a school, and um, you can complete your registration. So just, <clears throat> if you just click through and complete a registration, then you'll have a you'll have an account that you can play with on the Learning Explorer. Um, and then let me know if you don't get that link, or if you have any other questions, um, I'm happy to uh, answer anything for you. And thank you very much for your time.